the Standing Committee on Policy and Strategic Priorities of January 27th, 2022. We are reconvening from January 26th, 2022, last night. This committee meeting is being convened by electronic means as authorized under Part 14 of the Procedure Bylaw, and as such, committee members may participate in person or by electronic means. For committee members participating by electronic means, please do ensure your video is turned on and let the clerk know if you leave the meeting for the purposes of confirming quorum. It's really important, especially right now, I think we've just got six, so just quorum, so it's important that you do keep your, your um, videos on, please. Committee members are reminded that in accordance with section 14.13 of the procedure bylaw, members must enable their video to confirm quorum. Oh, well, I'm sorry, we no longer have quorum, so I'm going to um, stop talking until we get somebody back on. Okay, now we have somebody back on. And again, we are at bare more, uh, minimum quorum of six. Please, um, please, councillors, those of you who are on the line, um, stay, stay with your videos on. Thank you. Um, if a committee member loses connection during the voting process, staff will get you back online quickly while we suspend the voting process. The staff contact information has been circulated to you. Given the surge in COVID transmission and reinstatement of our COVID safety plan, the maximum capacity in council chambers is 20 persons. Members of the public who wish to participate are encouraged to submit comments online or participate via telephone. If attending in person, health protocols associated with COVID-19 will be observed in council chamber and city hall, and members of the public are strongly encouraged to attend remotely. Let me start by acknowledging that we are on the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Chief people. Uh, we thank them for having cared for this land, look forward to working with them in partnership as we continue to build this great city together. And I also want to take a moment to recognize the immense contributions of the City of Vancouver staff who work hard every single day to help make our city an incredible place to live, work, and play. Clerk, may we have the roll call, please? We have Councillor Carr in the chair. Mayor Stewart? Present. Uh, Councillor DiGenova is absent. Councillor Fry? Here. Councillor Swanson? Here. Councillor Hardwick is running late. Uh, Councillor Weeb? Present. Councillor Boyle? Present. Uh, Councillor Dominato is absent. Councillor Bly? Here. Councillor Kirby Young. Present. Uh, you have quorum, Chair Carr. Thanks so much. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so, Council, um, we completed items 1 to 11, heard from one person um, speaking in person on item 12 last night. Tonight, we have two remaining items. Num number 12, advancing efforts for an age-friendly City of Vancouver, members motion B7. And item 13, the year of the Sailor Sea, members motion B8. Um, I want to remind council members that if amendments are brought forward, you must submit them to the city clerk in final written form before the um, before you introduce them. And please ensure the city clerk has received your amendment by using council meeting amendments dash DL. So we are dealing now with referred items um, to re the two remaining items on the agenda. Um, that were referred from the council meeting on January 25th to hear from speakers, and we will follow um, hearing from speakers but with debate and decision. The ninth referred item is item 12, which was previously motion B7, advancing efforts by an, uh, sorry, for an age-friendly city of Vancouver, which was moved by Councillor Boyle, seconded by Councillor Swanson. We heard uh, from speaker one on the public body representative list yesterday. Today, we will start hearing from speaker two on the public body representative list. Um, Eddie Elmer, are you on the line to speak? I am, can you hear me? Yes, very clearly, welcome. And uh, you have up to five minutes to speak to council. Okay, great. I won't be using the five minutes because I'll be brief uh, this time. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Eddie Elmer. I'm co-chair of the City of Vancouver 2SLGBTQ plus advisory committee. And prior to this, I was a member of the Seniors Advisory Committee from 2012 to, I think, 2018. 
At its regular meeting on January 20th, the uh, advisory committee considered the motion before you, advancing efforts for an age-friendly city of Vancouver. The motion was supported unanimously uh, with the following four qualifications, uh, actually five. Um, in 2013, Vancouver City Council passed a motion to seek recognition by the World Health Organization as a global age-friendly city. Since that time, numerous reports have been produced with thoughtful recommendations to help Vancouver meet this goal. While we see merits in reviewing and refreshing these recommendations as required, it is our hope that the primary emphasis will now be on the implementation of recommendations rather than the creation of additional reports. As it has been almost a decade after Council's motion, we think the focus should now be on action. We hope that hiring a dedicated seniors planner will help to fast track the implementation of existing recommendations. Uh, number two, rather than working on time limited initiatives, we encourage the seniors planner, staff, and council to consider enacting or amending bylaws to ensure that age friendly initiatives have a lasting long term impact. So, for example, changes to the building bylaw to make homes more accessible or that include more sociable design features, which other cities have done. Uh, number three, as 2SLGBTQ older adults are a growing and still underserved population, we would like to see them mentioned explicitly in this motion. They seem to have been uh, left out, I presume inadvertently. Uh, we would also like the new seniors planner, if there is one, to be familiar with this population and to consult with our committee on the implementation of age-friendly strategies where appropriate. Uh, number four, as social isolation and loneliness are growing problems affecting the health and well-being of older adults, um, among other people, we strongly encourage um, the seniors planner, if one is hired, to review the 2018 Seniors Advisory Committee report entitled Social Isolation and Loneliness Among Seniors in Vancouver, Strategies for Prevention and Reduction. Um, and that report has 23 recommendations. Um, to make to reduce isolation and loneliness, um, most of which are uh, actions that are within the purview of the city. Uh, finally, we would like our committee to be updated on age-friendly actions that have been taken so far, that are in progress, or that are planned for the future. And if council wishes to proceed with a new formal senior strategy, we would also like to be consulted on that as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Um, you do have some questions, if you wouldn't mind staying on the line. Sure. Great. <clears throat> Councillor Weeb, go ahead up to three minutes. Thanks, Eddie, for coming to speak today. Um, I sure. really liked your comments. You're really talking and focusing on the actions. So you're not looking for a large new strategy, but the fact that over the last decade we have approved and moved forward some really good policy that needs to now be actionable. So is that the main goal here is um, not to create a new strategy, but really ensure that on the actions that we're doing as a city, that there's a planner to ensure that that lens is being put on everything, including for the 2S LGBTQ plus community. Um, is that kind of the main focus of your conversation? Yeah, pretty, yeah. And, and I, I reference, I don't know if I mentioned, we had, there's an age friendly action plan that was passed in 2013. And Reasons I don't know, it was sort of time limited. So it was 2013 to 2015, and at that point, um, it sort of um, lapsed. It was no longer valid, and the city sort of stopped doing some of the things in that action plan for reasons I don't uh, understand. And then some of those actions were merged into the two healthy city strategies, and then there was a loneliness report on top of this. Um, and then, of course, the World Health Organization Global Age Friendly Cities Guide has all sorts of wonderful uh, recommendations. So there's all these wonderful, glossy reports and books, and they've kind of been sitting on a shelf. And it's been frustrating, and it was frustrating for uh, the three terms that I was on the Seniors Committee. Uh, we're not averse to an over, doing an overall senior strategy, um, although we think it would probably be better to like just do a basic inventory of things that have been started, um, things that are, are um, that we could do in the future, things that haven't been done yet from those existing reports. Um, we don't seem to have much of an appetite to create this whole new strategy because that would involve a lot of work, just like the first age friendly action plan. That one involved hiring a consultant and doing focus groups and doing all sorts of background research and then writing the report and taking it to council. And you know, we see that that could take a very long time. And so it will be now 
over a decade since council voted to seek this designation from the World Health Organization, and that's kind of, it doesn't bode well for us if we actually want to make that application now, because we would have to justify why it's taken 10 years um, for, for us to really do what we set out to do 10 years ago. Okay, I, I appreciate that. I Because when I sat on the TGV 2S committee, the same thing, it was recommendations are in front of us, council um, has the recommendations, and now it's time to do the action. So I appreciate your comments and uh, look forward to trying to get make that happen. Thank you. Super, super. Great. Uh, thanks, Councillor Weeben. Those are your questions. Thank you so much for um, point point of privilege, Chair. Could you, yes. uh, Councillor Kirby, uh, could you add me to the queue? Oh, absolutely. For, for questions? Yes, I'm. I'm. I just added you now, and I will advance you. Great, Councillor Kirby Young. Great. Over to you for three minutes. Yeah, thank you, um, Eddie. I just have kind of want to zero in on one question for you. You mentioned several times, and you said if that planner or that position is hired, um, yeah. why do you say if and do you have kind of hopes, given all of the dialogue around other work will have to be prioritized or we don't have staff free to do this? And the motion's very clear about the desire to reassign resources, but can you speak to that a little bit in terms of your hopes for well, we, we, it's well, the committee's for this? Because I know she said there are several Okay, I was breaking up, I couldn't. I did not hear the last part of the question. If yeah. the chair could repeat. Yeah, I yes. just, I just said, I just said, I noticed that you said if several times, like if that planner is hired. Okay. So I just wonder if you could add some perspective on that. Well, Please. we're just, we're just saying if we don't want to presuppose anything. Um, we would like to see a seniors planner. Uh, we need somebody to coordinate all of, uh, to coordinate the actions in all of these reports, because um, there really isn't much coordination now across departments, um, but. You know, whether there is money to hire a seniors planner, that's for all of you to deliberate on. Um, and I won't wade into that debate. Okay, so your committee's position is you're just flagging the need and that it's time to do this. Is that yes. Fair? Yes. Because just we need that coordination. Okay. Great. There are people in social planning who do this already, but we need a dedicated a dedicated staff person with that with that lens and who's focused specifically on this and ideally who also knows about LGBTQ plus people. I have to mention that, of course, because that's the committee I'm on. Great, thank you very much and thanks for speaking. Great. Thanks. No problem. Thanks, Councillor Kirby Young. And uh, thank you, Eddie, very much again um, for uh, speaking to us and for all the work you've, uh, great work you've done for the city on this issue. Uh, okay, I appreciate that, thank you. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have another speaker on the list, um, Dr. Joy Masuhara. Yes, hello. Yes. Uh, Mayor. Go ahead. We have, um, you have up to five minutes to speak to council. Great, thank you very much. Uh, hello, Mayor and Council. I'm Dr. Joy Masuhara, uh, co-chair of Women Transforming Cities, and I'm speaking on behalf of this intersectional feminist organization. I'm also a family physician and have focused my career on care of the elderly for almost 30 years. So with the increasing numbers of older people in our cities, this motion is timely and important. So thank you to Councillors Boyle and Swanson for putting this forward. Women Transforming Cities supports this motion. Uh, this motion has many strengths. It asks for a plan and a dedicated full-time position to enact a plan towards an age-friendly city. It aligns well with the previous motion from 2019 to put a gendered intersectional framework on all the city's work. We know this work has started and must continue, but this motion gives it a boost. Age is one specific important intersection and the keeping of other intersections such as gender, race, ability, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, etc. in mind is also a strength of this motion. For example, we know that older women have a lower average income than older men. If you're single, indigenous, or racialized, these intersections will also change this average and contribute to other unique challenges. So we need to remember that one size doesn't fit all when we're planning and executing strategies for improvement. Other strengths of this motion 
it aligns with other work the city is already doing, such as the Healthy City Strategy, and that it asks for key partners to be engaged with in collaborative planning. I think this is really a, an important aspect. Um, and this includes health authorities and the CMHC to work with community partners. I would suggest that TransLink be added to this list, list as transportation is a huge concern, concern for older persons, and I hear about this on a daily basis in my practice. The motion also highlights housing as an issue requiring attention and mentions other key social determinants of health, such as food security, climate change, emergency preparedness, and transportation. Adding explicitly to this list, I would suggest income and social isolation inclusion. The city's senior advisory committee has already produced an excellent report on social isolation with recommendations back in 2018. And this report is still relevant and probably even more so today because of COVID. As well, other accessibility concerns such as access and ability to engage with digital technologies would further strengthen the motion. Again, all of this needs the intersectional framework applied. I work largely with multicultural elders and there are often more and unique barriers to access, understanding and successful use of many services. Another strength is the acknowledgement that community engagement and involvement with multiple stakeholders, including other levels of government will be necessary and that widespread education of staff and elected officials will be required. Included in this is the need to collect data and we strongly suggest the need for this data to be disaggregated. So action on rather than just having a plan and the resources to enable this will be key. And I know from last evening, Councillor Weed had concerns about where these resources will come from, and this will always be the case when we have competing priorities. However, this type of collaborative planning and coordinating, particularly with focus on the social determinants of health, things that cities can have significant impact on, these are the preventative actions that more than pay for themselves over the long run. It lessens the stress on emergency services, such as police and firefighters. It builds social cohesion and improves resilience. So keeping an intersectional lens, centering equity so that those most vulnerable will have the greatest benefit and that this will then have a ripple effect out to all will be important going forward. Women Transforming Cities, we're excited to learn more about the city's actions in the future and to further support the work. So thank you uh, for your attention and thank you to all of you uh, elected officials for your public service and consideration of this important motion. Um, thank you very much. Uh, you do have questions, uh, if you could just stay on the line. Councillor Weeb, okay. over to you for three minutes. Um, yeah, thanks for speaking um, and I appreciate you referencing last night. We've got a couple emails um, really concerned from people from the advisory committee on my questions on what should we cut. And I think the main goal is, I like the idea of us revisiting and going to a well-being budget framework where the return on investment in funding this position on the health and wellness of our seniors is so critical. And I think we need to change the frame of how we do budgeting to ensure that we can advance this work and in the resolutions is explore. So for me, do you think it's the outcomes that if we did hire this position and put this lens, we should be focusing on the health outcomes of our seniors. And that's such an important key to what this council should be fighting for. Of, of course, we want to you know, improve health outcomes uh, for seniors. And we know, like I said, the social determinants of health are some of the ways we can have the most impact. Uh, and it is where, where cities can, can be probably most involved. So, uh, you know, I think the coordination is really critical and then collaborating with all those other sectors that, you know, that work in the area that, you know, as well as the community partners who know what is needed, uh, you know, by the seniors themselves. And this, you know, of course, changes over time. And this is long term stuff. We know that we have this wave of of baby boomers that are aging, uh, you know, that are changing the demographic in the city. Uh, so this is important stuff that if we get ahead of and, and, and do the upstream stuff, that has so much impact over the, you know, over into the future um, for healthcare costs, for all sorts of other, other costs that are, are often hard to um, evaluate. Uh, but we know, we know that these things, you know, we know that these things work. So the biggest component is the coordination, which I totally agree, because obviously on Park Board, we had yeah. significant points. So 
coordination you think is the biggest one, really making sure this lens is put forward um, and yeah. ensuring that we um, look at what we've done and put the outcomes that are needed. And I love the idea of revisiting healthy city strategy. So thanks for coming to speak tonight. You're welcome, thank you. Great, again, thank you so much also for coming to speak and um, uh, for your leadership in the Women Transforming Cities. Um, yeah, very much appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Council speakers two and three have withdrawn, so that does uh, lead us to the end of the speakers list on this item. So um, at this point, I'm looking to um, any debate on this issue. And I'm moving us to a main queue for that. Councillor Boyle, go ahead. You have up to five. Thanks, Chair Carr. Um, I think I, I, I want to start by saying um, how much I appreciate uh, all of the speakers and also the huge amount of work that the Seniors Advisory Committee put into uh, drafting the first version of this motion um, that uh, Councillor Swanson and I were able to bring forward as their liaisons. A lot of work, a lot of thought, a lot of research uh, on their end went into that all, of course, on volunteer time and the work of other committees who uh, also endorsed the motion and similarly have been doing important work that overlaps and, and collaborating together. Um, I, I think there's a an amendment on its way to, uh, to recognize the input from the to us LGBTQ committee and ensure that that is included. Um, and, and so I'll just say, well, we wait for that uh, again, really appreciate the huge amount of work, the recognition of how these issues intersect, the, the recognition of what this means uh, across our city as more and more of our residents age as, uh, as the baby boomers age. And we wanna make sure that they continue to have uh, places to live I'm just a little bit stalling. Um, oh, I. Oh, okay, I just need a tech. I just, uh, if you're waiting for me, at, um, Council Boyle, I just need to um, support our. Sorry, Chair. I just need to be put on the queue to ask a question. Yes. Or, okay. So that, right. No problem. My Crestron panel is not working, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm done. Very grateful for all the volunteer effort, uh, and and I will leave it there. Thanks. Okay, that's right. And you are on the list next. Thank you so much, Councillor Boyle. Councillor Bly, you now have the floor for up to five minutes. Thank you very much, and um, appreciate the um, teamwork there, Councillor Boyle. I just. Uh, did want to um, submit an, an amendment to reflect um, Eddie Elmer as um, vice chair or co-chair to the 2S LGBTQ um, plus committee and myself as liaison um, to put forward an amendment to reflect some of the um, added recommendations. Yes, uh, we do have that. Just... I'm moving us to an amendment queue. Um, you may speak more to it if you like, but okay, we have actually have Councillor Kirby Young to speak to the amendment. Go ahead, Councillor Kirby Young, up to five. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I just have a qu clarification question through you to the mover, if I might. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just the component that says amend bylaws for uh, lasting impact, and I wonder if, um, if Councillor Bly, if you can clarify. Um, or expand on what you mean by which bylaws and amended in which way. Uh, I see that, you know, I had a second um, iteration that I've clearly sent the wrong um, version to the clerk. So I'm going to go ahead and send the correct version. Thank you for flagging that. Um, that was language that was uh, part of the comments from what the speaker had shared, but um, intended okay, to take out so I will just resend right now and sure I'm okay with that just to, if you can stop my time for that that'd be great thanks uh yes I will um stop your timer um although I think timers have um, clerk I believe timers have to keep going although it would be normally for Councillor Bly's timer wouldn't it yeah I'm so not. um Councillor Kirby Young I'm going to Okay, we're going to put you back on. Uh, Councillor Bly, um, we have a timer going for you. Great. Um, I, I, I don't need to say too much more except um, 
to acknowledge the work um, actually of Eddie uh, while on the Seniors Advisory Committee and the, the report um, that speaks to uh, ways in which a city can, within our jurisdiction, um, solve for isolation and loneliness with our seniors population and um, found it very interesting. So if no one has read it, uh, I do recommend taking a look, but just to acknowledge the work that was done. And then, of course, the very uh, important um, distinction of working with our 2SLGBTQ plus committee um, as many of our seniors and vulnerable seniors are part of um, the queer community and um, and offer a very uh, um, special lens to to some of the nuances of um, seniors in that community. So uh, as a liaison as well, hope that some of that work can be done in this particular year, uh, recognizing that um, that is really the discussion that we're having right now, but very important to have the language in the amendment and appreciate the suggestion by Eddie. Great. Um, thank you. And Councilor Kruber Young, do you want to come back on this um, cue to speak to the um, slightly revised amendment? Oh, uh, no, I'm good. I'm supportive. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, that means, Clerk, uh, you could move us to a vote on this. This is on the amendment. Um, just to be clear, everyone. Um, are the people, Clerk, I just need to know if Mayor Stewart is still on the line. Oh, he has voted now. Okay, we're all good. It's um, it's unanimous. Great, thank you so much, um, Councillor Bly. I'm going to move us back to the main queue. Councillor Bly, to the amended motion. Just hold my comments for a moment here. Thanks, Chair. No problem, <laughs> Councillor Swanson, to the amended motion. Yeah, I just want to start by thanking the members of the Seniors Committee of which um, Council Boyle and I are the liaison for working so hard on this. They spent uh, jillions of hours and went over every word. And uh, it's really important work. And I think the amendment makes it even better. So that's good. Um, this will put the seniors in the, in the queue, basically, to get their own planner, which I might not happen right away, but I think it will happen. and. I think that will be really good. Um, there's so many things that are impacting seniors, like the heat dome, like low income. There were, you know, lots of stats that they provided us. The median senior household income is 28,000. 46% of senior renters are in core housing need. Those are issues that we really have to deal with. Um, Seniors on uh, that depend on the guaranteed income supplement get about sixteen hundred a month, which is about seventy five dollars more than the average rent in Vancouver. So it doesn't leave much to live on. So homeless seniors are increasing, um, and I'm, you know, there's. As everyone has pointed out, we need an intersectional lens on this. If you're a racialized 2SLGBTQ+, if you are a senior with a disability, um, you, you need, we need extra attention. And so I'm so glad that we got stuff about intersectionality in this um, motion. And I like the idea of... Um, the woman transforming cities about focusing on the social determinants of health. Um, I think uh, if we, and the, then the other thing that the seniors pointed out is if we get this planner, maybe we can use that person to try and get some revenue from senior levels of government for doing some of the things that we need to do that'll help seniors. So I hope we can support this unanimously and go forward with it. Thanks, Councillor Swanson. Councillor Weeb, 
Over to you for concluding comments. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank the committee for the hard work they did um, and for the emails we got. Um, I appreciate being challenged on my comments from last <laughs> night because I think it is good that we get held accountable for the conversations and questions we do ask. Um, I think having the Healthy City Strategy work in this is critical. Um, I think that we have a lot of amazing policies that currently sit um, and need to be actioned on. Um, I hope that with uh, our current revenues, hopefully with COVID recovery, hopefully we can recover back quicker um, and our revenues can come back to the state that they once were so that we can find funding to move this as quickly as possible. I think it's really important um, that we have dedicated planners that represent um, our communities and ensure that we are delivering on the actions and recommendations that have been approved in the past. So um, I'd love to continue to push this and see how we can make these actions happen. They're critical. Um, loneliness has been um, with COVID and the heat dome. Um, I know one of the Vancouver ambulance attendants had said, it was one of the hardest days of his life um, because he met so many seniors that day that were in the worst shape and we are not wanting to live in a city like that. So I want to see this work move forward and I appreciate everyone that's put this together. Thank you. Great, thank you, Councillor Weeb. And <coughs> Councillor Kirby Young. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm really happy um, to sort of hear from back from staff about how they could prioritize this work on seniors. I think it's critically important. Um, and I think I shared with this council before when I was on the park board, um, we did a number of sessions out in the community um, and sort of asking people in terms of what real priorities were and the need to um, elevate the work that we were doing and ensure that we had supports for our seniors, whether it was enabling transportation access, thinking about how we were building our civic facilities, um, how they're integrated into housing strategy, um, was really something that rose to the forefront and I'm going from memory but there was a, a stat that was quite astounding and I think it was by about 2040 which is not very far away um, that we would have something like an 80 percent increase um, in our seniors population um, over 65 and then it goes down to I'm sure Eddie Elmer could probably correct me on the numbers but you know still significant around 50 or 60 percent over age um, 75 um, and that's quite mind-boggling when you think about it and and so not to be preparing to support such a significant portion of our population doesn't um, make sense to me. I also think that, you know, society is, so I think, often um, kind of reflected in what you value and valuing people that have come before you and contributed so much, um, I think really sort of speaks to um, what we make the effort to prioritize in life. And um, maybe I'll just end with this quote, it's one that I've always liked. And it says, in the end, it is not the years in your life that count, it is the life in your years. And I think about all the life that uh, seniors have given to us in our city um, in their work lives and their volunteer lives and community. And so I think it's really critically important that um, we make the effort to ensure that they are taken care of and they are prioritized. So I'm happy to support this and I look forward to hearing from staff how that work can be facilitated and prioritized amongst the other things that they need to do as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kirby Young. And uh, that is it for speakers to this motion. So could, could you take us to a vote on the amended motion? And that has passed unanimously. Great. We are now um, uh, having concluded item 12 on to item 13, which was the 10th referred item, um, previously motion B8, the year of the Sailor Sea, which was moved and introduced by Councillor Weeb, seconded by Councillor Dominato. Uh, we are now gonna hear from speakers on this uh, motion. Um, speakers obviously will be um, heard by phone patch through by moderator when their turn comes up. And the first speaker um, is, um, two people, it looks like, Emma Kingsland and Eden Perry. Hello. Oh, hi. Just before you begin, um, it doesn't state whether you are residents of Vancouver or not. Are you residents? Oh, I'm not. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Amazing. I am a resident of Vancouver. Okay. That's this so is Eden. And you're Eden? Yes. Okay. Great, thank you very much. Go ahead, you have up to five minutes to address council. 
Thank you very much. Um, hi, my name is Emma Kingsland, and I will be speaking with Ed and Perry today in support of the Year of the Salish Sea Motion on behalf of Simon Fraser University's Semester in Dialogue Fall 2021 cohort. I am currently a student at Simon Fraser University, and I'm studying biology and resource environmental management. And I would like to acknowledge that I'm calling from the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Quiquitlam First Nation. I'd like to thank the Quiquitlam who continue to live on these lands and care for them along with the waters and all that is above and below. Hi, my name is Adam Perry, and I am a student at the University of British Columbia, currently pursuing a major in global health and environmental sciences. I'm calling today as a resident of Vancouver and as a guest on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil -Waututh peoples. This past fall, both Emma and I were students in SSU's Semester in Dialogue program, which is a semester-long full-time program that focuses on learning about complex societal issues through dialogue. Our semester's focus was a semester by the Salish Sea, Explorations in Reciprocity and Care. Throughout the semester, we visited coastal sites, held dialogues, and learned about Indigenous stewardship practices. We met with over 50 experts on the Salish Sea, which included Indigenous elders and community members, NGO founders, business owners, government staff, educators, and many other stakeholders who have devoted their entire lives and careers to protecting the Salish Sea. However, alongside the immense joy that we found in building communities around a body of water as incredible as the Salish Sea, we also consistently saw a pattern of how extractive relationships with the land and ocean have resulted in the destruction of both ecosystems and communities around us. For too long, Indigenous voices have not been heard, nor have their stewardship efforts and practices been recognized and adopted, governance has been disconnected, and the public has very little knowledge on the issues affecting the Salish Sea. In the last year alone, forest fires and mass floods have degraded keystone salmon species spawning areas, in which the low availability of Chinook salmon has directly contributed to the rapid decline of the southern resident killer whale population. The students of Semester in Dialogue recognize that we need immediate, coordinated, and collective action to mitigate future ecological destruction caused by climate change. The proposed Year of the Salish Sea has been developed in response to these and many other systemic problems related to the management of the Salish Sea, as well as these extreme weather patterns we have all experienced in British Columbia this year. When we began thinking of a final project, we wanted to do something that would instill care of the Salish Sea and its fragile and important ecosystems into the public. However, after talking to many stakeholders, the responses were very similar. People do care. It is evident that people care about the environment and the well-being of ecosystems. However, people can only care about what they know about, and we discovered the problem is a lack of knowledge. The Sea Dog Society conducted a survey in 2019, and it was found that only 15% of British Columbians surveyed could identify the Salish Sea on a map. Our class decided to come up with a project that would help solve this lack of knowledge around the Salish Sea, and therefore create more public awareness, care, and excitement about coastal stewardship. Now this project has developed into a movement, and we hope to see it spread throughout British Columbia, and we believe that Vancouver can lead this shift in how we view our city's relationship with the ocean. The overall goal for the Year of the Salish Sea is to build momentum and urgency toward coastal stewardship throughout the City of Vancouver, create collaboration amongst stakeholders, and raise public awareness on Salish Sea matters. This is an opportunity for the City of Vancouver to lead municipalities, organizations, and residents in the advocacy of collaborative ocean management. It will provide the opportunity for collaboration between organizations, Indigenous knowledge, place-based education programming, and additional initiatives to create public awareness of the Salish Sea. This project also aligns with many ocean initiatives that are occurring within our proposed time frame, including the UN's Ocean Decade Declaration running from 2021 to 2030, Impact 5, the Sea to City Design Challenge, and the Salish Sea Ecosystem Conference, whose co-chair, Christian Williamson, who is also the Executive Director of the Georgia Strait Alliance, has written a letter of support for the Year of the Salish Sea. As you can tell, there are already many initiatives responding to the threats the Salish Sea faces, which are raising awareness about how we are interconnected with the ocean and advocating for stewardship of our lands and oceans. We believe that these efforts working towards living in reciprocity with the Salish Sea could be strengthened with greater collaboration through proclaiming a year of the Salish Sea. Thank you very much for listening to us today. Well, thank you very much for coming to speak to us today. Um, if you don't mind staying on the line, you do have some questions. Go ahead, Councillor. Yeah. Oops, sorry, Councillor Weeb. I just um, advanced. I think both the clerk and I advanced here at the same time. No, nope. uh, so go ahead. Yeah, thanks for coming to speak. I mean, um, I'm just wondering 
what kind of events do you see us connecting with First Nations and other groups and organizations? Like, what, what would the highlights be? What would the Year of Salish Sea look like? Yeah, for sure. <coughs> um, we noticed, um, as I had mentioned, many uh, ocean initiatives and events that are occurring. Um, and we held as a class at the end of the semester a um, meeting with many other stakeholders uh, from different uh, environmental organizations um, and talked about what the Year of the Salish Sea could look like. Um, and many of them agreed that they would uh, be interested in sharing um, and uh, reposting and sharing the events that are occurring um, and information related to the Salish Sea. So I think a real um, collaboration uh, between organizations um, of promoting each other's uh, events, I think really things to just gain excitement uh, and awareness in citizens, um, uh, engaging them in conversations about the ocean and about the Salish Sea and the history of it um, is really important. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming to speak tonight. Thank you. Great. And um, that is it for your questions. So um, uh, thank you again very much, both of you, for coming and for all that work you're doing on the Salish Sea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, second on the list is Emerald um, O'Donnell. Hello. Yes, hi. Um, uh, just before you begin, I'm just uh, wondering uh, if you are a resident of Vancouver. I'm not a resident of Vancouver. Okay, no problem. Um, go ahead, you have up to five minutes to address council. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Emerald O'Donnell, and I'm speaking in support of this motion. I'm an SFU student calling from Stalo and Kwantlen Territory. I moved home last year to support my family, so I am no longer a resident of Vancouver, but I remain an active member of the community because this is where I eventually plan to make my home. There are lots of reasons that I support this motion, but one of the most exciting things to me is the amount of opportunities it creates for the Vancouver community outside of environmental stewardship. I'm really passionate about building community. I've been doing environmental education and outreach for eight years. And one of the reasons I love that work is because it makes space to create connections and promote a sense of community in the places I love. So I get really excited whenever I see something that creates opportunities to build cross community connections. A year of the Salish Sea, in my opinion, is one of those things. I think that declaring a year of the Salish Sea or YAS could help boost community morale and draw connections across multiple areas of the city including arts and culture and business. If enough excitement was generated around a year of the Salish Sea, which I certainly plan to do, YAS could provide marketing opportunities for local businesses. Related businesses could promote themselves as a way to celebrate YAS. For example, Save to Sea Foods could promote their plant-based salmon, or the Vancouver Aquarium could encourage people to visit their Pacific Coast exhibit. Non-related businesses could promote themselves by showing their support in other ways. Turtums already does monthly specials, so they could totally do a Salish Sea Donut one month. Hunter and Hare gives to a charity every month, so if they chose a local ocean charity for some of the months during YAS, new customers who have their ears tuned to YAS could discover Hunter and Hare. If people were passionate, I also think YAS could provide opportunities for creativity and collaboration between businesses, similar to how the annual Hot Chocolate Festival has. I do not own a business, but as a consumer, I can see a lot of opportunities here. And if this motion is passed, I know that I will be pr promoting YAS to my favorite local businesses as a way for them to promote themselves and get more involved in our community. Similarly, I think YAS could provide opportunities to promote local artists. There are already existing arts opportunities in Vancouver, like Vancouver Mural Festival, that could choose to tie some of their work to YAS. Individual artists could promote themselves online through a YAS hashtag and the existence of YAS could make independent exhibits related to the Salish Sea particularly newsworthy. I've seen galleries organized around official declarations before. In October, there was an outdoor gallery on Granville Island to celebrate BC's Latin History Month. It featured art speaking to Latin and Indigenous perspectives on nature, which were perspectives that I probably would not have come across if Latin History Month hadn't been happening. Asparagus Magazine, a print and online publication based in Vancouver, is currently building their social media presence. If YAS puts the Salish Sea on people's radars, asparagus could help build their following by writing a Salish Sea piece or even gain sales through publishing a Salish Sea special issue. Across all areas of Vancouver though, I think the biggest benefit in the community is the opportunity to build hope and create space for human connection. We've all had a terrible past two years with COVID and then the recent floods and then COVID variants. 
YAS could create opportunities for moments of joy and celebration across the city. Businesses and artists celebrating YAS would contribute to that sense of community, but YAS itself could inspire organizations to host celebratory events or draw attention to ones that already happen, like World Maritime Day. At the Semester in Dialogue final event, there was a lot of ideas around public celebration on a macro level, but YAS could also create an avenue for people across the city to build their own connections in their homes, friend groups, and neighborhoods. My favorite time of year is Shark Week because I get to gather my community, learn some shark facts, and watch terrible movies with the people I love. After two plus years of staying physically disconnected from our loved ones, a lot of us need a shared experience like Shark Week to rebuild a sense of community. While I wish everyone could celebrate Shark Week as enthusiastically as I do, YAS is something that's a bit more universal. Being a coastal city, many of us love and depend on the Salish Sea. And for those of us who don't, YAS could be an opportunity to discover it. Having a year of the Salish Sea could give us a reason to connect across the city around something we all share. I know that it wouldn't be all sunshine. YAS could definitely trigger people's environmental anxiety because it would generate conversations about ocean threats. But it could also alleviate that anxiety by providing tangible ways for people to respond to those threats and by generating a sense of hope around facing those threats together. Thank you for your time. I really hope that you vote in support of this motion. Great, thank you um, very much for your um, uh, really great, great statement to us on this, that's great. Um, you don't have any questions, but we all really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Thank you so much. Great. Um, council number three, speaker three has withdrawn, so we're on to speaker four, Carlo Acuna. Hello? Yeah, hello. Um, we can hear you clearly, so go ahead up to five minutes to address council. Thank you. Um, my name is Carlo Acuna. I am the ocean campaigner for the BC chapter of the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, and I, motion, and I support this motion in the year of the Salish Sea. The Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society is part of uh, is part of one of Canada's oldest nonprofit conservation groups, and we work to protect wilderness and public lands and waters, and we've done so since 1978. The Salish Sea is a jewel on the southern BC coast. It is home to more than 3,000 wildlife species, including the southern resident killer whales, all five species of Pacific salmon and glass sponge reefs, which are only found off the BC, which are on, almost only found off the BC coast. The richness and abundance of this region sustained indigenous peoples for millennia and has led to prosperity for its settlers. But the sea and its surrounding watersheds are challenged by an ever-growing list of threats, such as climate change, biodiversity loss, and water pollution. Last year was unprecedented. A heat dome killed an estimated 1 billion marine animals. There were devastatingly low salmon runs, and the southern resident killer whale population dropped to 73, the lowest it's been in almost 50 years. This year is important for the Salish Sea. Uh, Canada is, uh, is, support, is supporting the United Nations Ocean Decade. They have also, uh, they're also working toward protecting 25% of its ocean by the year 2025, and working to 30% by 2030. We also hope to see meaningful advancements to establish a National Marine Conservation Area Reserve for the Southern Strait of Georgia this year too. And that would be around the area of Victoria. And then in September, scientists, government officials, and delegates from around the world are meeting in Vancouver for the fifth International Marine Protected Area Congress to discuss improving pro ocean protection. So to face the challenges of a rapidly changing planet, we need a healthy Salish Sea. A year of the Salish Sea will focus on the challenge will help us focus on the challenges the region faces, encourage collaboration to solve these issues, and then give hope for the rich for a rich and abundant Salish Sea we can all benefit from. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you both for your time and for your um, work out in the community um, on. Uh, on this a very important issue. Uh, there are no questions for you, but again, Council really appreciates you taking the time to speak to us. Oh, thank you for listening. Right. We are under speaker five, Sarah Hay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. You have up to five minutes to address Council. 
Amazing. Thank you so much. Hello, Mayor and Council. My name is Sarah Haley. I'm a mother, designer, facilitator, teacher, an avid boater slash water person, and a visitor on these lands and waters that have been stewarded by the Coast Salish people since time out of mind. I am speaking in support of Motion B8, Year of the Salish Sea. And um, what I have to say is a bit more personal, um, kind of drawing on what uh, everyone before me has already said. So for me, uh, Vancouver has truly been the gateway to the Salish Sea since moving here in 2003 from Ontario. And I know I'm not the only one. When I got here, I took up sailing and spent my weekends in regattas, at regattas, competing in countless local around the can um, uh, regattas and also uh, regional long distance overnight races. And between 2012 and 2020, I lived full time on our boat with my partner and our two sons, moored at Spruce Harbor Marina in the incredible neighborhood of South Falls Creek. So we truly have been living the life aquatic. I spent most long weekends and summers cruising around the Salish Sea, House Sound, Gulf Islands, Desolation Sound, and beyond. And during that time, I've witnessed the return of the humpback whales. I've witnessed the decline of fish populations and the devastating impacts from last summer's heat dome on our shellfish. I've witnessed the effects of relentless logging and fishing industry. Plastic, and seen plastic, shorelines covered in plastic debris, and I've witnessed also my kids' sense of awe and wonder when the dads returned from scuba diving with treasures like sea cucumbers and rock crabs and glass bottles from another era. Um, there's so much at stake for future generations uh, because um, and how we respond collectively right now matters tremendously. So last fall, I had the opportunity of teaching in the Semester in Dialogue program alongside Dr. Janet Moore and Ginger Gosnell Myers with the 12 incredible students um, from broad disciplinary backgrounds. A semester by the Salish Sea Explorations and Reciprocity and Care was designed in a way that would invite a broad range of folks whose lives are deeply intertwined and connected to the Salish Sea. And as you heard, we, post, we hosted weekly dialogues, students went on field trips, and in total, um, we uh, spoke with over 50 guests who came in and generously shared their stories, their research, their innovations, strategies, and concerns. Um, and students, I'm, I'm sorry, I got, Sarah, um, but you've run over yeah. time, so I'm, I'm oh very my sorry. Gosh. Oh, I, I timed myself to be like three minutes. I'm so sorry. Just one, just one okay. second. The clerk, just one sec. The yeah. clerk is signaling me. Um, I'm sorry. Our our meeting, more important than that, um, Sarah, uh, you are running over time, but our meeting has lost quorum, oh, okay. so we actually can't continue oh. right now. Stay stay there, oh, no. though, just in case. But okay. um, um, councillors, could you please um, put your, I mean, all of you get back to your, to your um, videos and make sure your video is on when you're at home and uh, we will resume when the clerk informs me that we have quorum. Okay. Sarah, it looks like perhaps we have quorum now. Thank you. I think, um, yes, Councillor Kirby Young is back. So again, um, councillors, please, we have um, bare quorum. Uh, this, the mayor's had to step away, so I uh, would really appreciate it if everyone just would keep um, keep your videos on and keep at your stations. Thank you. Um, so sorry, Sarah, for that um, that interruption. But again, oh, that's okay. yeah, um, just uh, wanted to thank you. Uh, there are no questions for you, but really thank you for uh, the work you do. And that was, um, it was incredibly descriptive um, stories about the Sailor Sea. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Great. So we are on to speaker six, Ginger Gosnell Myers.
Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, we can we can hear you. We're a little bit broken up, but we can hear you. So um, go ahead for up to five minutes to speak to council. Great. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, I am calling in as a supporter of the motion of the Year of the Sailor Sea. I had the privilege of being an instructor along with Sarah Hay and Dr. Janet Moore. Uh, for the semester of the Salish Sea uh, with the SFU Center for Dialogue. Um, I, I spent last summer uh, for six weeks uh, sailing along the Salish Sea, uh, witnessing the devastating effects of the heat dome and wondering what our future could bring. Going into uh, the semester with our 12 incredible students couldn't have been a more hopeful and a more welcoming home experience uh, from, I think, a lot of fear and concern that those of us who spent time on the water were feeling uh, from all of the loss of biodiversity that we had seen. Um, I really want to talk to you about the comparison for uh, implementing a year of the Salish Sea uh, with the year of reconciliation, which was an initiative that I led at the City of Vancouver and whose inspiration um, our students uh, who created the Year of the Salish Sea really drew from because I think there's always some questions around what does this mean for the city? Is it doable? Is it implementable? What type of resources are needed for it? And really going back to the impetus for why, the Year of the Salish Sea is about raising awareness of Salish Sea issues, organizations that support uh, activities uh, and sustainability efforts, um, and also as a means to uh, build a cohesive community uh, around um, Salish Sea uh, initiatives. Um, as a staff coordinating uh, the Year of Reconciliation, it was an incredible tool. It gave staff permission and political will to really come together and talk about how they could finally get a lot of the initiatives that they're working on off the ground, amplifying existing work. And right now the city is working on some incredible initiatives that deserve to be amplified, like the waterfront plans that are being worked on, the rainwater strategy, the sea to city project, among many others. I think that there's a lot of opportunity for internal uh, dialogue on what this means for uh, some of the uh, projects that deserve to be discussed and highlighted because Vancouver is a green city. That means it also needs to be a blue city. And when we're talking about blue urbanism, it's about uh, amplifying a lot of the work that the city is doing in this area, but not too many people know about. Um, and I really believe that people will be quite excited to learn a lot about this area that they call home and they know so little about, uh, like that we are on an estuary and a watershed. And what does that mean for city planning? What does that mean for daylighting the creeks? What does that mean for um, how we care for the lands and our neighborhoods? Um, I finally wanna talk about the incredible leadership that the year of reconciliation provided for where, raising awareness on that important matter and how much it impacted the public. And I think all of us can remember what our city was like uh, before the year of reconciliation and the important work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada and Reconciliation Canada. Um, there are some significant events taking place in Vancouver over this next year that the year of the Sailor Sea uh, can really build upon and provide momentum to. Um, and it is this public awareness that really grows over time, uh, but it requires this effort and this, uh, uh, this coordinated and communicated uh, message uh, to move us all forward. Um, I finally wanna say I'm so proud of our students for pulling this uh, effort together. It's incredibly inspiring to see our next generation really rise up uh, show that they also care for these lands and waters and taking initiative uh, to provide um, some direction that hopefully all of us can uh, carry forward. 
so thank you, Council, for your time. Um, I thank you very much, uh, Ginger, for your time and uh, all your great work in the community, and it sounds like a, a fabulous course. Um, there are no speakers for us, or no questions for you, but uh, again, very much appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Thank you. Uh, so that takes us to our last speaker, Lance barrett Leonard. Yeah, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfectly. Up to five minutes you have to speak to Council. Thank you very much. I'm uh, speaking in support of the motion for my organization, the Raincoast Conservation Foundation, uh, and I'm coming to you from the unceded, much, much cherished traditional territory of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Raincoast Conservation Foundation, where I work, is a, uh, is a team of scientists and conservation conservationists empowered by research to safeguard the land, waters, and wildlife of, of British Columbia. I joined the organization recently to set up and direct a new cetacean research program, building on a career as a research scientist with Fisheries and Oceans Canada and with the Ocean Wise Conservation Association. And by the way, cetaceans are whales, dolphins, and porpoises, um, as most of you probably know. I put in 32 consecutive seasons of boat-based field work uh, on cetaceans, mostly killer whales. In that time, I've worked along the BC coast, the Gulf of Alaska, Aleutian Islands, the Bering Sea, Mediterranean, North Atlantic, Southern Indian Ocean. And in the course of that work, I've never run across a place that's more beautiful, more varied, more rich in species and ecosystems than our own Salish Sea. It's a treasure by any standard, something you've been hearing throughout these talks. One of the things that makes it a treasure, in my opinion, is, is that it's a place where humans Human populations live alongside relatively intact ecosystems. Their ecosystems intact for now. Eight million people live in Seattle, Vancouver, Victoria, and Nanaimo, and many other towns. Two oil refineries, multiple pulp mills, chemical plants, shipyards are here. Two of the busiest ports in North America are here. Ships and tugs, pleasure boats, sports fishers, ferries, water taxis, and many other small and medium-sized boats ply the waters of the Salish Sea constantly. And yet, despite it all, a small population of killer whales still live here, Billions of salmon traverse it to and from their spawning rivers, shorebirds flock along its shores, herring spawn in its waters, seals and sea lions abound, and humpback whales, almost ab absent for almost a century, have returned. So not everything is lost by any means. It's under severe stress, however. Our southern resident killer whales are barely hanging on, and they carry some of the highest loads of toxic pollutants of any animal on the planet. Herring stocks aren't gone, but neither are they thriving. The underwater soundscape roars with the noise of vessels 24 hours a day. Miraculously, there's never been a major oil spill in the Salish Sea, and this is a credit to the professional mariners and marine safety regulators alike. But if one did happen, the environmental damage would be colossal, and it would last for decades. So our treasure still gleams despite its tarnish, but like many precious things, it's very fragile. It needs our care and our constant attention. In October and again in November this year, I was privileged to meet with the SFU Semester of Dialogue students who advanced this proposal. I was very impressed by their enthusiasm, concern, their clear-sightedness, and their practicality. Every one of them was very clearly 10 times smarter and 20 times more organized than I was at their age. The idea of proclaiming the Salish Sea is brilliant, I think. The Semester of Dialogue students have advanced a number of compelling reasons, and I'm just going to elaborate on them in my remaining time. First, the year of the Salish Sea would provide a forum for Vancouver citizens to learn more about this treasure on the doorstep, increasing their, both their appreciation for it and, and understanding it's important as a reservoir of ecosystems and, it, and additionally as a transport system for people and commerce. The students have said that the year of Salish Sea would encourage a culture of love for the Salish Sea and for Vancouver as a coastal city, and I couldn't agree more with that. Secondly, the year of the Salish Sea would foster the development of linkages and collaboration between individual groups with interests and concerns, as the students have pointed out, in many of which I can say from experience work in relative isolation at present. When it comes to environmental protection, we know that there is power in group actions and that inspiration and enthusiasm and motivation are all contagious. The year of the Salish Sea will help create and then maintain that contagion. And third, the biggest environmental challenge, challenge facing us, of course, is climate change. The Salish Sea is already dealing the effects of climate change, and the ecosystems it contains stand to suffer catastrophic impacts if it continues its present trend. We have a crisis on our hands. By helping to build appreciation, again, love, for what we have in front of us, the year of the Salish Sea will provide one additional reminder, a really compelling additional reminder, of what we stand to lose to climate change if we don't address it. 
accelerate our efforts to address, address it. Fourth, we don't own the failure seat. We're privileged to enjoy it. We take inspiration from it, but we don't own it. We're responsible for both past and present generations and future generations to look after it, to care for it, to treasure it, to pass it on in, in better condition than we found it. The year of the failure seat will be one step, I believe, in our transformation from consumers to carers, from despoilers to stewards. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and you do have some questions, if you wouldn't mind staying on the line to answer. You bet. Great. Councillor Kirby Young, up to three minutes for questions. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Hi, Lance. How are you? Hi, Sarah. Very well, thanks. It's nice to it's nice to uh, it's nice to hear you. Um, I know that you spend a lot of time and have a huge amount of expertise in terms of studying our cetacean populations um, of all types, but especially whales. And I just wondered. Um, because a lot of the residents of Vancouver are often transfixed when we do get sightings in the harbour. If you and you touched on it a little bit, if you could sort of give us a perspective on what's happening with their transient and um, resonant pods. Well, it's interesting that right now what we're seeing is the resonant killer whales, uh, the sub so-called southern resonant uh, population, using the Salish Sea less and less, or at least they're using the inner waters of the Salish Sea. They're spending their more and more of time out in in the uh, mouth of the Strait of Juan de Fuca, um, and we don't really know if they're being pushed or pulled, if they're being attracted out there by more prey out there or being driven out there. Um, by a scarcity of prey and, and, and difficulty obtaining it in, in the inner waters. In contrast to that, the, the transients or bigs killer whales are, are, are kind of doing the opposite. Their numbers have increased a bit, um, for quite substantially over the last 30 years, but they're, uh, they're also using the Sailor Sea, coming into the Sailor Sea more often than they ever did, than they have for, for the best part of 100 years. So that, um, and of course, we know that there's a good population, a healthy population of seals. Uh, in in the Salish Sea and sea lions visiting quite often as well, and we think that they they finally discovered it. it took them a while um, after seals build that, but they've discovered this this reservoir of, of of prey, and that's why they're coming back. That's right. That's interesting. Thank you. Uh, it's one of the questions that we, that we get asked a lot, and people are like, "Well, why are why are they coming in, and what's happening? And are the food sources scarce? Is the behavior changing?" So I think you know these are the kind of things that people are really interested to learn about, right? Yes, thanks. Thanks. I agree, Sarah. And and the um, humpback whales are coming in more often too. And what most people don't know is there was a commercial uh, uh, whale watching industry in Vancouver a hundred years ago, um, the first one really known in the world. And and it was and it died suddenly when a whaling operation set up in Nanaimo, and all the humpbacks were were eliminated in a year and a half. And it took a hundred years for them to come back. Uh, now they're back. Uh, or now they're coming in again more and more often. And this is just uh, this is wonderful. That's what we have to to maintain. Wonderful. Thank you. It's nice to hear your voice. You too. Um, great. Thanks so much, Councillor Kirby Young, and um, thank you very much, Lance. That is it for your questions. Again, thanks uh, for coming to speak to Council. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Council. That is it for our. Um, speakers so we can now move uh, to any discussion you might have on this topic councillor kirby yes councillor weeb go ahead um yes i'd like to thank uh all the students in the class um i love the quote that yos can build opportunity for community and connection i think that's so critical um, in these times for us to be more connected to the Salish Sea and to the land and waters around us and to learn um, the indigenous knowledge and spirits and stories um, that surround us so that we can feel more connected um, and feel more at home. Um, so to me, this work is critical. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure to continue to build with the momentum. I've been hearing from cities, Nanaimo, Victoria, Olympia, uh, North Shore that are excited to see what we do here and if we start showing some leadership, um, building this momentum, First Nation communities as well, getting on board, organizations getting on board. So I really hope that us as council here today um, can start some really strong momentum. There's a lot of great conferences, events coming. Um, I think council got a letter. Um, there's a group with canoe cultures that are looking to bring indigenous canoe races back to False Creek for the first time in over 100 years. These are the type of events the Year of the Sailor Sea or Yoss can have. This is the impact we can do. I'm looking forward to it. I really hope this passes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Weeb. 
And it looks like you're the only speaker to it. So um, I believe that we can be moved, clerk, to a vote. The mayor absent? Yes. Okay. Uh, that is unanimous. And um, that's great. So um, that concludes item 13, which is our final item. The standing committee portion of this meeting is now complete. Uh, we will now convene in council. Um, the clerk, the mayor Stewart is not in attendance. Is that correct? Right. So we will now convene in that's council right, sure. with Deputy Mayor Fry as chair to deal with the recommendations and actions from today's committee meeting. Over to you, Deputy Mayor Fry. Thanks, Chair Carr. We will now convene in council to deal with the recommendations and actions from the Standing Committee on Policy and Strategic Priorities meeting from today and yesterday. Clerk, may we have the roll call, please? Deputy Mayor Fry in the chair. Mayor Stewart is absent. Councillor Carr. Here. Councillor DeGenova is absent. Councillor Swanson. Here. Councillor Hardwick is absent. Councillor Weeb. Councillor Boyle. Present. Councillor Dominato is absent. Councillor Bly. Present. Councillor Kirby Young. Present. You have quorum, Deputy Mayor Fry. Thank you, Clerk. We need a motion to adopt the Standing Committee's recommendations for items 2 to 13. So moved, Councillor so Carr. Thank you, Seconder. Kirby Young. Thank you, Councillor Kirby Young. All those in favor say yay. 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 All those opposed say nay. The motion is carried unanimously. We also need a motion to approve a leave of absence for Councillor Dominato tonight from 6 to 10 p.m. under urgent business. So move, Councillor Bly. Councillor Bly, seconder. Kirby Young. Kirby Young. All those in favor say yay. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried unanimously. Would someone like to move the motion to adjourn the meeting? So move, Councillor Bly. Councillor Bly, seconder. Kirby Young. Kirby Young. Thank you, Councilor Kirby Young. All in favor? Yay. 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 <laughs> Thanks, everybody. This meeting is now adjourned. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, uh -huh. staff.